Whenever I do carve top guitars, I get a ton of questions from you guys on what are the best tools to use to carve a top. My personal favorite are the two smaller Ibex planes. I purchased a lot of tools. I even bought the bigger one. This is a little bit hard for me to set up. I've used this on my arch tops and with a softer wood, this works really well. Most of the time when you're doing a carved top, it's hard maple and using this bigger plane and getting it set so ever perfectly to get it to pull off just a little bit is a huge pain. This little one and medium sized one, I've had a ton of luck with. I've set this thing maybe a year ago and I haven't had to reset it and it just works ever so slightly, pe peeling off little bits that make this process go so much smoother. I really enjoy using this little one. It doesn't take a whole lot and it leaves a little bit of a scratch the way I've got it set up, which I'm fine with because then I can come back and clean it up with a sandpaper. I really would avoid using heavy grit sandpaper or the power carver. If you haven't done a lot of tool work before, those get really aggressive really quick. If you slip and you get a little bit dip in the wood, can't do anything about it. So I really try and avoid using the power sanding tools until the final end and I'm at a really high grit where I know I'm not gonna screw anything up. This medium one, I finally got set up right. It's a little bit more aggressive. So here I sort of need to recarve this curve here. And I've been doing that with a little bit of back and forth so you can see these chips versus let's say like this chip. So much smaller. Takes a little bit more time to get this set up. I've got a sharpener tool that I'll use to clean up the face here. And really, this is one of the more fun things about carving a top is doing it by hand. So that other video gave me a great sort of level playing field of where I need to do the carving. Then I'll come back with these tools and just sort of pull down where I know I need to look. When I was running my copy carver, I found a gold top that had a broken neck. And what I did is I created an extra ledge going around with some basswood. I screwed this into the top and this is my pattern for the carve top. And what I'll do is I'll get my feeler gauge and I'll just make sure that these curves around the bridge area are correct. This one's still a little bit thick. I actually kind of like it versus this is more of a thinner top. What I'll do when I use this smaller one is I sort of go through a pass. So this area still needs a little bit of a dive down. So I'll start in the corner and work it back like that. That way I've got more of a gradient that I can deal with. I don't spend too much time in one spot. I kind of try to follow a line as I'm doing this. Another trick when you're carving tops is to get a really bright area to do this in because you've got little scratches and nooks and crannies you gotta really dig into. So I'll move the body from time to time and see where I've got some pivots and dits that I still need to work out. So once I'm done with the planes, I found this great Japanese file from japanesewoodworker.com and it's got a nice pull motion downstroke here where I can come clean up anything that's left over from the plane. So 
I've got a couple carves right here. Need a little bit of work. This nice curve file will help me pull this down. And I had a little bit of a line there, now it's gone. These files were $29, really great deal. Been using them for a couple of months now. Really happy with the way they work. So we got one clean up here as well. Just a nice sort of pulling down motion. Again, I'll use the same sort of coming across motion that I use with the planes. To make sure I'm not getting any divots. This is looking pretty clean. Got one right here I gotta clean up. So all of the lines and marks are cleaned up. I'm gonna take this upstairs and hit it with some 220 grit. And we should be pretty close to being done. All right, so for sanding the top, we need a foam pad on my sander so I don't actually dig out or create any bigger gouges. So I've got a stick'em foam pad, and actually I'm doing 180 grit here, going over the top in a couple different places to see what it's looking like. So really focus on the dome, see what it looks like as I begin to sand down. What was really nice about those files is any gouges that I had created sort of pulled those out and I've got a pretty even top so a couple of scratches here and there but we're just going to go ahead and start sanding them out. I try to avoid the edges I don't want any diggins but we're just going back and forth with a really light touch cleaning this up. So we'll speed this up here Again, really high grit, nothing that'll really take anything down. I'm avoiding sanding the edge and where the neck is. That's already been all set and I've got that measured properly. We'll put another piece of 180 grit on. That other piece I had was old. And we'll just go back and forth. You can see here, I've moved a little bit closer to the edge and I'm tilting the sander up slightly and then now we'll go with the hand sanding on the edge so I make sure that I'm not creating any gouges or extra problems with that. So I've got a foam pad, same sandpaper grit, and we'll clean it up. Focusing a lot around that pickup so that it's nice even, got no gaps where the pickups are going to sit. We'll just go back and forth and get this cleaned up. So we're ready to do the binding and then one final sand down. But this is how you carve a Les Paul top using some templates in part one. And then some planes and files here in part two with a little bit of sanding at the end. You'll see this video coming up completed. But thanks for watching guys. We will see you in the next video.
Me, 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 me. Uh.